Hi everyone, DKeys here, bringing you a Necromancer's perspective of a Valgardian kill. Now, as a Scepter Dagger Necromancer, I have pretty decent ranged DPS, and so I am a member of the ranged team, which is responsible for standing in the green countdown AoEs that spawn periodically through this fight. My build includes the Curses, Blood Magic, and Reaper specialization lines, and I'm using Scepter Dagger as my primary weapon set, with Scepter Focus as my secondary. Uh, it has pretty competitive DPS without much need for melee uptime, though of course being in melee can be useful for getting buffs as well as using Reaper Shroud 4. I noticed that the sustain from Blood Magic was pretty useful for this fight, but overall this build had some low burst CC. Now granted you have lots of chill, some cripple, and also some fear from this build, but you don't have the ability to completely obliterate a break bar besides your Flesh Golem's charge. So if you find that your party CC is lacking, you can always swap that focus out for a Warhorn for that extra long days. Now I also noticed that the mobility from Death Shroud 2 was also very useful for this fight. Sometimes I could use it while untargeted to rush to a green AoE if I thought I'd be late, or after a green countdown AoE, I could use it to rush back to melee and follow that up with Reaper Shroud 4 for some really good poison damage. Also, if you find that mobility is an issue in this fight, you can also trade for dagger movement speed for a little bit loss of group sustain and DPS. Now those green AoEs spawn about every 15 seconds in a fight and have a 5 second countdown. So it's something that you need to be aware of throughout the whole fight, except during split phases. These green AoEs always spawn in the third of the arena that the Valgardian is standing in, centered on the pillars around the edge of the arena. So always try to keep your camera pointed so that you have a good view of that whole portion of the arena. When you're standing in those circles, use your chill, cripple, and fear to help slow down the seekers since you don't have a lot of good hard CC that would knock away any Seekers in the area. I would try to save your Flesh Golem CC for the boss. When in melee, try to stand behind the Bell Guardian so that you minimize the damage taken. Even though you have decent sustain, there's no reason why you should take damage when a simple correction of your positioning would otherwise avoid it. At split phases, you'll likely go for the Red Guardian which is susceptible to condition damage. And again, you want to use your soft CC to help slow down those seekers so that everyone else can safely DPS as much as possible. While fighting the Red Guardian, try to avoid the floating orbs since they still deal quite a bit of damage to you. And don't forget to grab the mushroom at the pillar if you have that mastery unlocked. When the Val Guardian reforms at 66 and 33% health, there will be portions of the floor that are unsafe to stand in. At 66%, it is one portion which starts with the green area, and at 33%, it is both the green and the blue areas. This area changes about every 25 seconds and proceeds in a clockwise pattern, so it is up to your tank to make sure that the Val Guardian gets him out of that side of the arena so that the green AoEs that you need to stand in aren't in bad spots. This has led to many, many wipes of many, many groups. Also starting at 66%, once he reforms, he will have a break bar that will need to be broken about every 30 seconds. If your Flesh Golem's active skill is off cooldown, definitely use that to help chew through that break bar quickly. Otherwise, try to apply Chill and Fear and even Cripple to help keep that break bar going down. Overall, I think Kandi Reaper is a pretty decent choice for Veil vale Guardian.